الحمد لله تفرد بالربوبية وأبان للإنسانية دلائل الألوهية أحمده تعالى وأشكره على ما أسدى من منة وعطية ودفع من نقمة وبلية وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أنقذنا بالبعثة المحمدية من براثن الإشراك والوثنية وأعزنا بالتوحيد وأبطل مسالك الجاهلية وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدًا عبد الله ورسوله خير البرية وسيد البشرية صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين أشادوا صروح الحنيفية وأعلوا منار الملة المصطفوية والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear brothers and sisters the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم showed us the path to guidance the path that leads to all good and he was very keen that we should adopt this path and follow the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow in this dunya so that we can attain success in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Surely a messenger has come to you from amongst yourselves. And what causes difficulty to you is difficult for him. And he is keen that you attain goodness. And he is kind and merciful towards the believers. And from this kindness and mercy that the Prophet ﷺ had toward the believers is that he made sure that if there was any good advice to give us, he conveyed that message and gave us that advice. And whenever he would receive any revelation, he would make sure that he conveys this revelation to the ummah so that we can benefit until Yawmul Qiyamah. And one beautiful example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sharing beneficial advice that was given directly to him by Jibreel Alayhi Salam is the hadith where it is narrated that Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he gave him five pieces of advice. And these five pieces of advice Jibreel alayhi salam gave to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam conveyed these advices to us so that we may benefit from them until yawmul qiyamah. Jibreel came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, Ya Muhammad, ish ma shi'ta fa'innaka mayyit. وَأَحْبِبْ مَنْ شِئْتَ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُهُ وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتَ فَإِنَّكَ مُجَازِمْ بِهِ وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنِ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَعِزَّهُ إِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ Five beautiful admonitions that Jibreel alayhi salam gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu in turn shared these admonitions with us. Let us go over these beautiful pieces of advice one by one and let us make it our intention to benefit from each one of them. The first thing Jibreel alayhi salam said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this narration, Ish ma shi'ta fa innaka mayyit. Live however you want to live because surely you are going to die. Live however you want to live. 
because surely you are going to die. So when we realize that surely we are going to die, what type of a life do you want to live? You want to live a life that prepares you for that reality that will come to each and every one of us. And if we live our life according to the knowledge that we have that we will certainly die, then inshallah we will live a life that will be productive for us after we reach that certainty of death. And this is something that no one will escape. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall taste death. And no creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will escape this. And it is similar to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Az-Zumar to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Surely you will die and surely the people will also die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ أَفَإِمْ مِتَّ فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ And we have never given to any man before you an eternal life. If you are going to die, will they live forever? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't even give his favorite creation, the best of mankind, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't even give him an etern eternal life in this world, then no one else can have this. So we have to live our life according to the reality of death. And if you think about it, death is the only certainty of life. When a baby is born, the only thing that you can say with certainty for this baby is that one day this baby will die. There is nothing else you can be certain about, whether he will have a happy life or a sad life, whether he will be rich or whether he will be poor. You can't know any of this, but one thing you can know for sure, without any doubt, is that this person will die. So death is the only certainty of life. And once we understand that, and once we realize that, we will prepare for that moment that none of us will escape. And when a person's time comes, there is no way to bring it forward. There is no way to get more time. Because the Malakul Maut, the angel of death, he comes to everyone at the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed him to come. It could be a young person, it could be an old person. Just this last weekend, we had two janazas in the Masjid of Garden Grove, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. The janazah on Saturday was a young man, 22 years old, who died suddenly in a motorcycle accident. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. And the janazah the next day was an elderly woman who was actually a pillar of this community. And she was four times the age of the person whose janazah was the day before. Subhanallah. The angel of death does not discriminate. It comes to whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained it to come to at their appointed time. And there's no way for us to change this. So we need to be ready for this reality, for this certainty at every moment. And one of the beautiful ways to do that is by following the instructions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَذِمِ اللَّذَّاتِ Often remember the destroyer of pleasures. And what is the destroyer of pleasures? The destroyer of pleasures is death. Remember this often. No matter how many worldly pleasures you may be enjoying in this world, you must remember and you must realize that one day death is going to come and cut you off from your pleasures. And they will be separated. They themselves will be separated from that which they desire. So we have to make sure that we realize this and we live according to this reality. Thabit al-Banani, rahimahullah, one of the great scholars of the earlier generations, he said that, نَحْنُ كُنَّا نَشْهَدُ الْجَنَائِزِ فَمَا نَذْرِي مَنِ الْمُعَزَّى فِيهَا لِكَثْرَةِ الْبُكَى We used to go to the funeral prayers and we didn't know who to give condolences to. We wouldn't know who to give condolences to because everyone was crying so much. 
whether they were related to the person who had passed away or not. Or not. Everyone was crying so much, so much to the extent that we would come and we don't know who to give condolences to. And why was this? He goes on to say, وَإِنَّمَا بُكَاؤُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا عَلَىٰ الْمَيِّتِ And their crying was not for the person who had died. Rather their crying was for themselves. Because they took to heed the admonishment of the Prophet wasallam, And they attended the janazah and they attended these burials in order first and foremost to remind themselves that one day they would be joining these people as well. And this is something none of us will escape. And the more you remind yourself of that, the more you will prepare for that moment. And that is why Jibreel alayhi salam said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ish ma shi'it fa innaka mayyit. Live however you want to live because surely you will die. So live in a way that you would be pleased to die upon. Live in a way that when you die, you are happy and comfortable with the way that you lived your life. And inshallah, if that's the case, then when you die, you will die a death of peace and a death of honor. And you will have an easy time in your grave and an easy time on the day of reckoning as well. So let us all take this advice that Jibreel gave to his beloved, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us take heed of this and let us implement this advice in our own lives as well. Ishma shi't fa inna kamayyit. Realize that you will one day die, so live your life according to your knowledge of that reality. The next piece of advice that Jibreel alayhi salam gave to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ahbib man shi't fa inna kamufariqu, and love. Whom you want to love because surely you will leave him the relationships that we have in this world they're not going to be permanent in this world you will be separated from the one that you love in this dunya either you will go or the beloved one of yours will go whichever one goes first Allahu Alam but you are going to leave that person either he will be taken away from you or you will be taken away from him. It will happen. So love whom you will, because surely you will be separated from that person. And what does this mean? It means we need to love the people for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love the people based on the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in this way, even though you will be separated from this person in this dunya, and there's no escape from that separation, you will be reunited with that person that you loved in Jannah, inshallah, if you loved that person for the right reasons. So Jibreel is saying, وَأَحْبِبْ مَنْ شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Love whom you will, because surely you will be separated from him. So if we understand this, we will only want to love the people who bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we love the wrong type of people, people who take us away from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that love will turn into hatred and enmity on Yawmul Qiyamah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَىٰ يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِ لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا On that day, the wrongdoer, the evildoer, he will be biting his hands. And he will say, oh, I wish that I took the path with the messenger. And I wish that I didn't take Fulan, that I didn't take such and such person as my friend. Why? Because, لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي This person, he caused me to go astray from the reminder, from the Qur'an, after the reminder came to me. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا And surely the shaytan, he deserts, he abandons mankind in his time of need. When the shaytan wants to whisper to you and tell you to do this and that and tell you to take the wrong companions as friends, 
He will beautify this to you. But then when you're in trouble, when you're facing difficulties, that's when the shaitan abandons you and he deserts you. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا And surely the shaitan, he deserts man in his time of need. So be careful about this. And choose wisely whom you love. Love only those people who will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that love remains even when you are separated and you will inevitably be separated from that person in this dunya. You will be reunited on Yawm Al-Qiyamah in Jannah inshallah as long as you love that person for the right reasons. But if you loved someone for the wrong reasons, you loved someone who took you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya, that love will turn to hatred on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The close friends who were close friends in this dunya, on that day, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, they will be enemies of one another. Close friends in this dunya, enemies of one another on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ Except those people who were muttaqeen, those people who had taqwa, those people who feared Allah, those people who kept their duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then their friendship will remain even in Yawm Al-Qiyamah and even in Jannah bi-ithnillah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi, أَيْنَ الْمُتَحَابُّونَ فِي جَلَالِي الْيَوْمَ أُظِلُّهُمْ فِي ظِلِّي يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلِّي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, He will say, where are those people who loved one another for my sake, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? On this day, I will shade them in my shade on a day where there is no shade except my shade. So this is the only type of love that will last. Even though you will be separated from your beloved in this dunya, you will be reunited with him in the hereafter. And this is the only kind of love we want. We don't want love that turns into hatred and enmity on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So this is why Jibreel alayhi salam told the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَأَحْبِبْ مَنْ شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ And love whom you will, because surely you will be separated from that person. The next beautiful piece of advice that Jibreel alayhi salam gave to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُجَازِمْ بِهِ Do whatever you want to do. Do whatever kind of deeds you want to do. Because surely you will be held accountable for those deeds. And you will see the consequences of those deeds. Do good, do bad. Whatever you do, you are going to see the results of that. You are going to see the consequences of that. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ And whoever does even the tiniest amount of good, he will see it. And whoever does even the tiniest amount of evil, he will see it. So do whatever you want, but you will not escape the consequences of your deeds. You will not escape the consequences of your deeds. And another point here is that we are responsible for ourselves. Let us stop blaming other people for our own problems. The reason why we face problems in this dunya is because we are far from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Whatever good comes to you, it is from Allah. And whatever evil befalls you, then it is from yourselves. It is from yourself. So let's not go around blaming different people for the problems that we are facing. Let us rectify ourselves first before we start blaming others. And this is a common thing about Muslims these days. We are in such a weak situation, but we don't want to look at ourselves. We don't want to rectify ourselves. Rather, rather we are always trying to find some outside source to blame for our problems. This political movement, this party, this conspiracy theory, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Knights Templar, whatever. I've heard Muslims talking about all of these things, blaming these things for the problems that the Muslims are facing today without even taking a moment to look at ourselves and rectify ourselves. 
Surely many of these things may exist. I'm not, the, I'm not denying the existence of these groups that want to harm Islam. But the first step that we need to take to rectify our situation by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to correct ourselves. To correct ourselves. When someone blames the Illuminati or the Freemasons for the problems of the Muslims today, did the Illuminati or the Freemasons prevent you from getting up for Salatul Fajr? Did they come to your house and pull your blanket down upon you so you couldn't get up? Or was that yourself? Who do you have to blame for these things? We have ourselves to blame. We need to rectify our own situations and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us success. And if you look at the old generations of the Muslims and how successful they were in this dunya, and then you see how that slowly faded away up to the situation that we find ourselves in today. What is the reason for this? Why did this happen? It happened because we changed what was in ourselves from good to bad. ذَٰلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُ مُغَيِّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمْ حَتَّىٰ يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take away a ni'mah. He will not take away a blessing that He has given to a people until they change what is in themselves. So if we ask why are the Muslims not in the situation that they were under during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, we say because what is in us is not, what is in, is not the same as what was in them. We have changed what is in ourselves for the worse. And the only way to regain that past glory is to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to do that successfully. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, he said a beautiful statement. He said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ فَإِذَا بْتَغَيْنَ الْعِزَّةَ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ أَذَلَّنَ اللَّهُ we are a people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave honor to us through Islam. Now if we try to seek honor from another source, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate us. And that is what we see is the situation today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify the affairs of the Muslims. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us all to bring ourselves to account and correct our own situations and bring good through the ummah through this. Bi'ithnillah. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بهدي سيد المرسلين أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله العظيم الجليل لي ولكم ولكافة المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه وتوبوا إليه فيا بشرى للتائبين والمستغفرين الحمد لله الذي هدانا للإسلام أكمله لنا وأتمه علينا ورضيه لنا دينا أحمده تعالى وأشكره وأستعينه وأستغفره وأثني عليه الخير كله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو الأول وعليه المعول وهو المرتجى ومنه المبتدى وإليه المنتهى وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله هادي البرية ومعلم البشرية ومجدد الحنيفية ومزعزع كيان الوثنية صلى الله عليه وعلى آل بيته الأطهار وصحابته الأبرار وتابعيه الأخيار صلوات تامات كاملات متعاقبات ما تعاقب الليل والنهار وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد the next piece of advice that Jibreel alayhi salam gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنِ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ And know that the nobility of the believer lies in his standing up in the night, which means praying optional prayers in the night, salatu tahajjud. This is where the nobility of a believer lies. If you want nobility, you want sharaf, you want respect, then you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the depths of the night, begging Him for your needs. You forsake sleep, you forsake your beds in order to call upon your Lord the Most High. This is true nobility. And this is the way that the nobility of a believer is achieved. Look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. Look at his life. Was he a busy man? Absolutely. He was the head of state. He was the commander of the military. He was responsible for the affairs of the Muslims, distributing charity, taking care of the needs of the ummah all day. 
But in the nights he would find time to set aside between himself and his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would stand so long in the night that his feet would become swollen and cracked. And Aisha radiallahu anha asked him, Ya Rasulallah, why? Why are you doing this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you for whatever is past and whatever is in the future. Why do you need to do this? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to her, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Shall I not be a thankful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Subhanallah. This was the nobility of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And our nobility lies in the same type of action. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people who stand in the night and call upon our Lord with humility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people who pray Salatul Tahajjud and Qiyamul Layl regularly. Ameen. And the last piece of advice, the fifth piece that Jibreel alayhi salam gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this beautiful narration. وَعِزَّهُ إِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ And the respect of a believer lies in him not being dependent on the people. Even if a person is in a difficult situation, it is more appropriate for a person to depend solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be free of need, be independent of need from the people. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his cousin, Abdullah ibn Abbas, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ When you ask, ask Allah. When you seek help, seek help from Allah. This is the true sense of tawakkul that a believer should have. And if you look at Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was being thrown into a fire, Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and asked him, do you need anything? He was about to be thrown into a fire. And Jibreel alayhi salam, the greatest of the angels, he came to him and said, do you need anything? Ibrahim alayhi salam answered, from you? No, I don't need anything from you. But from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then certainly I need his help. This is the attitude that we should have. No matter what type of difficulties come to us, depend solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your needs. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever keeps their duty towards Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for this person and he will provide for him from sources that the person could never have imagined. And whoever depends upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be enough for that person. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from al-mutawakkilina alayh, from the people who put our full trust and dependence in him. Ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from these five beautiful pieces of advice that Jibreel alayhi salam gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ability to reflect on these pieces of advice and to implement them in our lives. Ameen. Hatha wa sallu wa sallimu rahimakumullah ala al-rasul al-mujtaba wa al-nabiyy al مصطفى كما أمركم بذلك ربكم جل وعلا فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله اللهم صل عليه ما تعاقب الليل والنهار وصل عليه ما ذكره الذاكرون الأبرار اللهم صل عليه ما زهرت النجوم اللهم صل عليه ما تلاحمت الغيوم اللهم صل عليه ما أشرق الضياء ولاح وصل عليه ما تعاقب المساء والصباح فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين أبي بكر الصديق وعمر الفاروق وعثمان ذي النورين وعلي أبي السبطين وعن العمين الكريمين والسبطين العلمين وعن الستة الباقين من العشرة المفضلين وعن أهل بدر والعقبة وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المكروبين 
واقض الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون